Parents advice to their kids about healthy eating and weight could backfire with harmful effects. Psychologist Lisa Demore discusses this in a new article for the New York Times website. She writes, quote, parents worry that comments on their children's eating habits will be received as judgments about body weight or character. Lisa is a CBS News contributor and is here with the best way to start the conversation. Good morning. Good morning. This is such an important topic because you want to be able to address your kids' eating habits, but at the same time, you don't want to insult them or say something wrong about their body image. What's the best way to approach it? You know, I think this can be more neutral than we think it can, and there's a few different ways to keep it neutral. One is we can just focus on the biological realities. Human bodies need a certain amount of nutrition to survive, and we can only eat so much in a day, so what we eat has to provide that nutrition. So if you eat a lot of cookies, that will give you energy, but it doesn't give you vitamins and minerals and all of the things you need to go on. Another way we can approach it is from the context of self-care, that how we eat is how we look after ourselves. And we need to eat foods that sustain us, and we need to not eat too much of what's hard on our bodies. Mm -hmm. And then the last way, and this is a really interesting one, is to talk about the broader impact of our food choices. That we can eat an apple, which is relatively kind to the environment, or we can eat a highly processed apple-flavored snack from a factory and a lot of packaging, and that's harder on the environment. And this last one is interesting because when you eat in a way that you feel is good for the environment, you get this immediate gratification. And it's gratification that usually has us choosing the less healthy choice. You so this makes it easier to make a healthier it's, choice. That sounds so civilized, Lisa. I, know, I, I mean, but honestly, when you're sitting there yeah. and you see a child that's yeah. out of control, I have a friend of mine that has a very overweight son. Yeah. And I saw her the other day ask him if he wanted another piece of cake. Okay. I had to stop myself because it's not my child. Right. But I had to stop myself from saying, is that really the best yeah. thing to do? So you're saying don't make any judgments and just say talk about health? Well, I think what we can say is are you still hungry? Right? And have you had nothing but cake today, or do you also need something that's going to give you nutrition? That's so good. it's still neutral. Go back to the question of self esteem yep. and body dissatisfaction. Yep. Mm -hmm. So these, of course, get quickly tangled up together because we have a lot of problems around self esteem. We see um, body satisfaction drop very precipitously, especially in adolescent girls. So it does matter how we talk about food, and it does matter how we talk about appearance and weight. And the general wisdom around talking with children is to avoid conversations about dieting, to avoid comments on weight, and to put our emphasis on eating healthy and being active. Mm -hmm. And children are modeling their parents' behaviors. Usually children eat what parents eat. Yep. Consistently we Rup see... Ruh-roh. <laughs> yeah. Ruh-roh. Yep. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But quality and quantity. Yeah. You know, kids eat like their parents. Do what I say, not what I do. No, I, I didn't do that well, I admit. I didn't do that well. You actually, you, you say actually bringing in the idea of the social justice or what it means yeah. to, has to do with the environment yeah. can actually be really motivating. Explain that. How you so, can... For teenagers in particular, they do really well with messaging that involves sort of sticking up for the little guy. Mm -hmm. And so there's this great research that shows that when you highlight to teenagers, look, highly processed foods, they're heavily marketed, you know, there's some manipulation in there, or, you know, a factory does a lot of, you know, harm to the environment. Teenagers can actually really change behavior with that kind of inf information. Can we talk can we... to you about the presidential yeah. election? Yeah. You know, Nora made an interesting observation yesterday that she had heard from a nine-year-old boy who said, you know, I now know about the P word and the B word. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking at the news where they're giving um, disclaimers about this not, might not be mm -hmm. suitable for children. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the presidency of the United yeah. States. Yeah. So we have to have, how do we have these conversations yeah. with young children about what those okay. words mean? Well. I think there's two ways we can go at this. You know, one is to talk about the impact of language and then also talking about what words mean, right? These are two different things. So we can say, look, language can be used for harm and we should be, we're having these conversations at home anyway, right? I mean, kids are calling each other names anyyway, so we can extend that conversation. That name. But then there are, you know, there are names that they may be learning yes. words that they haven't heard before. Yes. And, you know, if a kid says, what does this mean? Yeah. You know, I think the first question back is always, what do you think it means? You know, usually they have an idea and you want to find out what they think before you start with your idea. And then I think you can say, you know, those are words that are meant to cause harm. And that's a word that describes a part of a person's body and it's meant to cause harm. Thank well you. said. You're welcome.